Lions, and indeed all of today's cats have a common ancestor that walked the earth 25 million years ago. Its name? Proilouis lemonensis, meaning the first cat. With its body a similar size to domestic cats, this creature was the first step in the lineage that led to the African and Asian lions we see today. The Panthera genus, to which modern lions belong, diverged from the Felidae millions of years ago, likely originating in Central Asia. There is a debate about exactly how long ago this divergence occurred, but it could have been as early as 11 million years ago, or as recently as 1 million years ago. Either way, it was long after Australia split from the rest of Gondwana 99 million years ago. A reason for its unique wildlife, and a reason why lions don't live there. Instead, lions, Panthera leo, evolved throughout Africa and Eurasia. The oldest fossilized lion remains have been found in Tanzania and are thought to be around 2 million years old. During the Middle Pleistocene, African lions were widely distributed across the continent, but the changes in vegetation and climate that occurred throughout the Pleistocene separated lion populations. The growth of equatorial rainforest between 180,000 years ago and 80,000 years ago separated those living in East and Southern Africa from those in the North and West. As the Sahara Desert expanded between 80,000 and 27,000 years ago, western and northern lions became separated. As rainforest declined and gave way to open grasslands, lions moved from west to central Africa. The North African lions dispersed into southern Europe and Asia. The following extinctions of the lions from the European, North African, and Middle Eastern populations limited gene flow between African and Asian lions the only two subspecies of lions left today. So, lions have had a long and turbulent history, and those that survive today are the hardest of the species. But could they survive in Australia, a land where desert covers 18% of its land mass, where average annual rainfall is only 419 millimeters, or 16 inches, and where the hottest temperature recorded in the country hit almost 51 degrees Celsius, or 123 degrees Fahrenheit. If we first look at lions' diets, lions are generalist hypercarnivores. That means that they survive on meat alone. They are adapted to take down prey larger than themselves, hunting alone or in their prides. They are camouflaged within their environment. Their sharp teeth and claws help to latch onto prey, and their speed and agility help them to outrun even the most nimble of antelopes. They are well-adapted apex predators. They hunt a wide variety of prey, mostly ungulates. In Africa, these include zebra, wildebeest, antelope, and buffalo. They have also been observed hunting giraffes and even juvenile elephants. They will also take down warthogs, although these are generally considered too small for a lion to gain enough nutrition from. In India, lions often hunt samba deer and spotted chittle deer. In Australia, there are no native ungulates, but there are plenty that have been introduced to the continent over the past few centuries. Captain Cook introduced several species of placental mammals to Australia in 1770. These ranged from rodents to deer. In fact, six species of non-native deer roam wild in Australia. These include the same samba and chittle deer that lions prey on in India. They also include European fallow deer and red deer. Many of these species are considered pests as they destroy vegetation and a range of habitats. Total deer populations have exploded recently, from 200,000 in 2002 to between 1 and 2 million in 2022. If left unmanaged, their population can increase by 30 to 50 percent every year. Wildlife officials are trying to manage their numbers. It seems if lions were introduced to Australia, there would be plenty for them to eat. The habitats favored by the deer are mostly forested, with some venturing out into the open. Asiatic lions prefer hunting in closed habitats, so this would suit them. Red deer weigh similar to wildebeest, and the heaviest males are a similar weight to smaller zebras. Lions would be able to take down Australia's invasive deer and could thrive in their large numbers. Other species that could be considered prey for introduced lions are wild buffaloes, these two were introduced to Australia in the 1800s. Today, more than 160,000 roam the Northern Territory and are having a major impact on the environment. 
privately hired musterers round up and export thousands to be exported to Southeast Asia. There have also been calls to help reduce the buffalo populations, but neither of these is having any impact on their growing population. Perhaps lions could solve the problem? It seems, from a dietary perspective, lions would do very well in Australia. But what about the habitat and climate on offer for them? Could they survive this? South Africa, where 13,000 lions reside, has an arid, hot, and cold desert towards the west and center, and a more temperate climate towards the east. The temperate climate is where South Africa's largest populations of lions reside, in the Kruger National Park. Lions typically inhabit grassy plains and savannas, and regions where annual rainfall averages 300 to 1,500 millimeters, or 12 to 59 inches. Temperatures in Kruger typically range between 5 and 35 degrees Celsius, or 43 and 91 degrees Fahrenheit. Due to its immense size, the Australian continent has a huge variety of climates and habitats, some of which would be suitable for lions. Most of Australia comprises desert or semi-arid regions. However, there are small areas of temperate climate in the southeast and southwest fringes. In the north, a tropical climate dominates with grasslands and deserts. This has a dry and rainy season, much like that of South Africa. Rainfall fluctuates massively depending on the region. In the center where it is incredibly hot and arid, rainfall would be too little to sustain lions. Areas that would fall within the range of rainfall that South Africa's lions are used to include the south, east coast, and parts of the north. Although the far north could be considered too wet, as it can exceed 3,000 millimeters, or 120 inches annually. In Darwin, in the north, temperatures average 28 degrees Celsius, or 82 degrees Fahrenheit. In the east, temperatures are milder, at around 20 degrees Celsius, or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Certain climates within Australia would be suitable for lions. Today, they live in more than 20 different African countries, with a very small population in India's Gear National Park. The climates of each of these countries vary, but lions have found a home there. Australia could provide the right sort of climate and habitat for lions. There are millions of square miles of protected areas across Australia. There are over 80 national parks and reserves in the Northern Territory alone. With Kakadu National Park being the largest in Australia, one of the biggest savannas in the world is the Australian tropical savanna biome, which covers an area of more than 140,000 square miles in Australia's north. In conclusion, we believe that lions could survive in Australia. It seems that there would be plenty of food for a healthy population of lions to live off, and there are certainly some areas with the right type of climate and habitat for lions to live in. Of course, introducing a top predator like a lion could wreak havoc on the ecosystem. The introduced species already posing problems for Australia's wildlife such as deer, buffalo, and rabbits thrive because there are no natural land predators for them in Australia. Introducing one of the world's most successful predators to Australia would certainly shake things up a bit. Dingoes, introduced to Australia about 5,000 years ago, have been blamed for the extinction of Tasmanian devils and the Tasmanian wolf on Australia's mainland. Although this theory has since been debunked, it shows just how fragile an ecosystem can be, and the introduction of a foreign predator could prove disastrous. Having said that, seeing lions in Australia's outback would be an incredible sight. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.